There's so many choices out there right now with LS engines. Sometimes the line gets blurred. What do I get? You know I've been driving these Generation 5 direct injected engines with 8 speeds. I've been driving 5.3s. I've been driving 500 horsepower cammed engines. Currently I'm driving a 6.0 L96 and what's best for you? Well, it really depends on what you're going to do. This 6.0 to me is a perfect expedition engine. This is a simple engine. It does have VVT, but that's proven to be very reliable. It does not have AFM. I'm in a relatively heavy four-door JK right now, and we're getting on the freeway, which this is not steep, but just merging on the freeway is so easy with this engine. Just touch the throttle. we're at freeway speed. So the 6.0 has got plenty of power to get your JK up to speed and it's got an iron block which makes it very very rugged in cold heat, river crossings, whatever you're gonna do with your Jeep. It runs on regular gas. It'll pretty much run on any gas you put in it. It's inexpensive. It's a great motor. We really haven't had a substitute for the 6.0 for quite some time. But now we do have the Gen 5 5.3, which performs similar in my opinion. The 6.0 still has a little more torque, but overall the 5.3 Gen 5 with all of its technology has probably more usable horsepower and torque. So this 6.0 in my opinion is for the guy who's going to do expedition who's got a relatively heavy JK that's got to go into the middle of nowhere. I don't believe this engine's going to get the same mileage as the Gen 5 motors, so if that's a consideration, you may consider the Gen 5 engine. Really the difference is the Gen 5 engines are all about technology, direct injection, continuous variable valve timing, air fuel management, lots of parts moving inside. As long as all those parts are reliable, you're good. And I'm sure GM is going to make it reliable. But if you want to throw back to the simpler times, this LS L96 is an excellent engine. And there's some overlap, meaning if you were to get this engine or a 5.3 Gen 5, you're going to be happy with either one. I have had some customers disappointed with the 5.3. They'll get a swap down with 33 inch tires and they'll go to 40s and add 500 pounds of armor to their rig and then the 5.3 is not enough. This 6.0 is not going to suffer from that as much. So there is some overlap as far as engines, engine choices go. If the 5.3 isn't enough, you can go to a 6.0, but it really depends on what you're going to do. If you're in Florida at sea level, no mountains around you, the 5.3 is going to be fine, even with a JK on 35s. But if you take that same JK, drive it to Moab, up seven, 8,000 feet, climbs, and that 5.3 isn't going to be enough. It's going to be enough to get you there in style, but it's going to be downshifting and revving up. And the 6.0 is going to get better mileage. So then you want to go with the 6.0. The 6 liter is relatively inexpensive. You can pick these up for $2,000 with some miles on them and they'll go 300,000 miles so it's probably one of the best values out there. The Gen 5's are coming down but they're not in that price category yet. Then we're talking about the 6.2's, the 400 plus horsepower engines. Now these engines will, will get the job done no matter what your JK is pretty much but we're stepping the fuel up to premium. The Gen 5 6.2 does run on regular, the truck engine. The LT1 is recommended to run on premium. But in general, when we talk about the 6.2 Gen 4 motors, which is the L92, L9H, L94, they require premium gas, synthetic fuel. They will return good fuel economy if you drive them reasonably, or 6.2s. They're all basically the same engine. They're all aluminum, all VVT, the L92 did not have AFM or flex fuel. In 2009, they added flex fuel called the L9H. 2010, 
2010 and up, they added AFM and call it the L94. They're all excellent engines. Those engines are over 400 horsepower. I've got an L9H in my Jeep. They will return mileage in the mid to upper teens if you drive rationally at the speed limit and don't keep your foot in it all the time. So the Gen 4 6.2s are excellent performance engines. You can think of them like LS3s with more torque on the bottom. Then we have the LS3, and I really think the LS3 for many years has been the engine of choice for performance in a JK. And I say that because the LS3 is probably the standard right now around the world for engine swaps, and that's why it makes so much sense in a JK. 450-ish horsepower, excellent reliability, runs cool, it's just a great, great motor. So if we look at the LS3 and its simplicity, no VVT, no AFM, no flex fuel, <clears throat> although there are versions of the LS3, like the L99, that do have those features, we're talking about the bare bones LS3, which is essentially a small block Chevy from 1955, upgraded to modern technology. And it really is amazing what the LS3 has achieved. If you consider it's an overhead valve, push rod engine of ancient design, yet that motor still runs on par with a lot of the best of the European engines. The Gen 5s, of course, are running extremely clean, but what they're doing now is they're throwing in a whole new mix of technology to increase efficiency. Now, GM isn't rating them double digit better. They're rating the 8-speed 3%, 3.5% better than the 6-speed. That is not a significant improvement. Now, I do think that the 8-speed with the proper gearing and driving techniques can outperform the 6-speed. I've actually been driving several 8-speeds and, and I can see where it's going. I can see that by running 373s with 35s, you can enjoy that low RPM cruising and and still have a heavy JK launch off the line. So that's where the 8-speed is going, and there's going to be an incremental improvement in mileage and efficiency. The engines themselves, they had to do something drastic. Well, when I say drastic, they really couldn't get much more out of the conventional V8 overhead valve design. So they went to direct injection. It's a well-known technology that's been around a long time. It also has well-known issues, carbon buildup, uh, blow-by, uh, the intake valve's not getting lubricated properly, but the advantage of the direct injection outweighs all that. And knowing General Motors, they've probably spent, and I know they've spent millions of hours on the direct injection heads, CAD design. The, the benefits are outweighing the, the downsides at this point, and as time goes on, it's just gonna get better. The continuous variable valve timing, that's a technology that's been around for a while also. Actually, VVT has been around for a long, long time. I remember in the 80s the discrete VVTs of Honda and Toyota, very annoying to drive just because the nature of the cam phasing, but by the 2000s it, it came time for GM to include continuous variable valve timing. Now GM did make the choice of running one solid cam for intake and exhaust and phasing that cam. They did build test engines with independent intake and exhaust cams, cam and cam. This did a couple of things. It added a lot of parts to the engine. It increased the length of the engine because it had to run two timing chains. And they determined that the benefits of running that extra VVT on the exhaust cam just wasn't worth it. So they kept it simple. They kept a single cam. <coughs> they made it continuous VVT and the results are pretty amazing. What really amazes me about the Gen 5 engines is how responsive that throttle is in the low and mid range. Like right now I'm going up this little Red Rock Pass and if I give it a little throttle, you see the transmission downshifted, I'm accelerating. With a Gen 5 motor that wouldn't have happened. What would have happened is it wouldn't have downshifted, it would have accelerated, you would have felt that cam come in, you would have felt that high compression and it just pulls the vehicle in the gear that it's in. So I'm really starting to like that. It's taken me some time to warm up to it, but man, the results with those 5.3 and 6.2 Gen 5s are just amazing. And as much as I like these engines, I really think that's gonna be the future. These engines are gonna be around a long time, I and mean, we still got guys putting small block Chevys and JKs, but the Gen 5 is, uh, is just a phenomenal engine. And 
I feel if the if the if the efficiency if we can take this heavy pig of a JK, this unaerodynamic brick, and get reasonable economy from it, then the Gen 5 makes sense. The V6s aren't really doing it. They're coming out with a turbo four-cylinder. Uh, you know, you're getting some horsepower, but but really, if you drive a Pentstar with 40s on it up a up a mountain at 75, 80 miles an hour, uh, it's not the ideal engine in a 7,000-pound JK where the Gen 5 is. I, I've cruised Gen 5 to 80 miles an hour at low RPM with eight speeds, and they'll go up a hill in four-cylinder mode. It's, it's really amazing what they can do. So that's the direction we're going in. Gen 5 is a larger engine than the Gen 4 because the direct injection increases the height of the valve covers. They've got very tall intakes on the truck motors for long intake runners and bottom end torque. And I'm not sure I would change it out for an LT1 just because it's that inherent torque that makes your vehicle move. And I love I love the 5.3 the and the 6.2 Gen 5 motors, the, the power that they have. So don't don't mess with that. I, really, I got a real spot for these new Gen 5s now after putting a lot of miles on them. I think that they're gonna be the future. And guys know that we are working diligently on building a kit that is plug and play 100%. We are, turning out brackets now, billet brackets that are just bolt-on. I see guys struggling on forums, trying to fit their compressors and power steering pumps. We got all that nailed. We've been doing this for over 10 years. We've got, or eight years, we've got hundreds of these JKs on the road. These billet brackets are just awesome. Put them up against your block, bang, bolt them on, you're done. Air conditioning lines are gonna bolt on. You're not gonna be futzing around with fabricating lines and hoses and clips. It's all been done. And one of the reasons we need to do that is for our in-house production. Because remember, what you do, we have to do. So there's some amazing things coming out with our new electronics. Our new harness is a GM harness right from GM. There is uh, not a whole lot to be, I think there's five wires or six wires that need to be tapped into the vehicle in our Gen 4s, and even less in the Gen 5s. Uh, we're getting that down to 100% plug and play. As I mentioned earlier, we are doing some amazing things with a can right now. We've actually eliminated many of the modules in the vehicle and we're just settling on what we need is 100% reliability. We need failure modes. We need redundancies. We need to make sure that that GM engine is going to run and get you out of a situation if, all, if everything fails. If all you have is the engine control module on the GM side and a fuel pump, that's all we need to get you home. And we need to make sure that that stays intact. My guys have literally eliminated several of the modules in the vehicle, which reduce the complexity, but also reduce the functionality and the reliability. So we're getting there, and we're not gonna we're not gonna push the limits on that until it's ready. But you're gonna start seeing that technology come out, and when it does, essentially what we're gonna have is the best engine for a JK with excellent reliability and extremely easy installation uh, along with the instructions we're going to offer and the plug and play components and what I mean by that is there's a lot of kits out there that you're going to buy the kit and then it's going to be up to you to figure out well how am I going to get these power steering lines or how am I going to get this air compressor on we're not going to leave any of that up to up to you it's all going to be done and everything we can do to engineer factory components in is being done factory air conditioning lines engine mounts power steering lines you name it it, if it is supported by the dealer, we are going to try to support it. We're trying to reduce the number of bespoke items to just a handful. So we're gonna have factory electronics, factory piping, hoses, factory engine mounts, starter. Uh, no, no fooling around with, there's, there's no reason to make a swap that you cannot service in the future.